So I realized there's something really weird about yellow. It's actually not just yellow, but any color that is bright, that is really close to white. It's more common to transition from light to shadow by increasing its saturation than simply outright dropping its value, making it darker. So if you sample the yellow hair, which is one of the trademarks of Hayasaka, you'll notice the color goes from here to here to here to here to here, really into the shadow realm over here like this. The transition on the palette curves like this, as opposed to say aqua's blue hair. Light area, shadow area, darker shadow is a more linear progression. Takina's dark hair, the changes are even more drastic like this. The value simply just plummets like no one's business and it will still make sense. So with that idea in mind, you can have different options. I kinda like option 3 and 4 and I think I ultimately settle with something in between. But yeah, I don't think that many people have explained the nitty gritty of the color transition. I don't usually watch YouTube videos for art advice, so I don't exactly know, but I just want to share my experience. Anyway, Hayasaka is one of the coolest, one of the most versatile anime characters I've ever seen. Whenever Kaguya presents her with some crazy ass demands or creates some sort of monumental shitstorm, she'll always be here, swoops in like a ninja and makes the problems go away. And I like to compare her to Pam from The Office, and obviously Kaguya is Michael. Well actually Michael is more like Aqua, they're obviously not the Alexander the Great type of boss, they're here more for morale support or whatever. They are genius in their own way, but also like Kaguya, they all have a debilitating lack of common sense. And Hayasaka, just like Pam, is here to wipe their boss's ass. Hayasaka is cute and sexy, and more importantly, she means business. She's not joking around, and she's about to kill you. And that's the whole concept of this painting. The outfit. I would say white shirt is probably the easiest kind of outfit that you can draw. I don't know what I was thinking when I was trying to do some made outfit without a lot of experience or doing some cosplay stuff. That's just ridiculous. It's almost like challenging Ebony Warrior in Skyrim before maxing out your skills or getting to level 80. It's just crazy. But whatever. The key is you have to think of one, the tension point where the forces are applied. So for example, the breast pops out here. And then in this case, because the waist is turned, it's twist a little bit. So again, there's a tension point on the, on the waist. So somewhere in between, it would be some crazy folds. And secondly, you have to think about it three-dimensionally. So the folds are actually additional structures on top of the outfit. And depth is literally the only thing that separates the two-dimensional and three-dimensional worlds. It's really hard to think about it, but it should be your prime concern, your like number one nemesis that you have to deal with in order to draw something that has a semblance of reality. And then even without an exact reference, you can sort of extrapolate of what's going on and kind of make the end results aesthetically pleasing. The eye level of this painting is kind of low. It's something that I'm not really good at. I especially like the fact that you can see the ceiling. It really sells the perspective. I don't know. I think this painting is okay. It's one of those moments that you know it's not good enough, but you don't exactly know how to improve. I still think it's rather good. Um, I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. So yeah, Secretary Hayasaka sitting on a table looking at you condescendingly. That's about it. Bye.